Hi everyone, my name is Lada. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you my IB process portfolio that I did for visual arts. And I did HL, so I'm going to be showing you more pieces that can apply to SL as well. I won't be going over exactly what the criteria are because that is very subjective with the visual arts curriculum since you take your own inspiration on different artists and can follow a different path during how you created your project. But I will be going over um, how my teacher taught me to approach doing a piece and how that really helped me in creating seven final pieces. If you want to see the complete mark scheme and criteria that the IB asks for in terms of the process portfolio, comparative study, and the exhibition, I'll be linking it in the description because I'm kind of going to be following my approach which was taught by my teacher instead of exactly what the IB um, asks for because it's very vague. I will be linking in the description a complete my complete process portfolio for you guys to look closely and to actually read the text because I think that's gonna take too much time and it'll just be easier if you just want to skim through and and see what I wrote because that's that's not as important as seeing how I developed my projects. So I'm gonna be going through my process through my first piece because I think it really encapsulate like exactly what my teacher wanted and the steps that we had to take and it is quite a complete project. Not all of my final pieces were that complete so i think it'll be a a good example for you guys so the first thing my teacher always told us was to have an idea initial idea what you wanted to convey what did you want to talk about what did you what did you want to be heard so that's where we start with the initial idea i mainly took these ideas from my personal life something that i wanted to talk about, about me, or about something in my family, or even something that was interesting to me. I could discuss social issues, uh, environmental issues. I saw a lot of COVID-19 pieces because um, my first year of IB was when the pandemic hit, so it really impacted my year group. I even did a piece on COVID-19, it was actually my last final piece. So my first slide here is the introduction to my project. It already is half writing and half uh, images, but that's kind of what you want to do for almost every single uh, slide that you submit to the IB because it, it shows a balance between, oh, you actually know what you're talking about and you're trying to explain the development of your idea, but you also have to show it visually to help examiners see exactly what you mean. So in the top left here, I start developing and explaining what I wanted to make my piece about. This piece is about mental health as I did it in the beginning of the pandemic, but not strictly regarding the pandemic. I wanted to talk about issues with depression and how, um, how to visually represent what that might feel like through a motif of water and um, and through the facial expressions of a portrait. One amazing tip that my teacher always gave was to title everything. This first project was called Submerged, but I probably thought of this title a year after because it was my first piece and I it's kind of scary naming your first piece, so I waited a while to finally give it a name. But with everything, you do have to name it clearly so your examiner knows what it's going to be about. So Submerged is the name of the project, but then I would always label my initial ideas, my experimentations, my artist inspiration. You always have to clarify to the examiners what they're looking at so that it's easier for them to understand what you're trying to say. So here you see I only have two experimentations. One is just a digital sketch really quickly of how I wanted to approach uh, and stage kind of my portrait. So you have the composition down before I even took any primary sources. And then I have a picture that I did a, um, a drawing of. The next slide is the second step after my initial idea, which is the artist inspiration. So for the artist inspiration, you have to have some connection to the artist's work, but not exactly copying it. So I knew I wanted to do a painting, but before that, I knew I wanted to work with water. So I focused on finding an artist that could uh, show me how to work with water. How do I want the portrait to um, 
look with the water where is the composition gonna be like I, I had to start thinking of those ideas and try and form a final image so that I could actually create it now here for me to deal with that and for me to understand the artist's work I recreated one of their pieces just as an experimentation to know how I wanted to play with the water and how difficult that would be for the material I wanted to do. For this experimentation, I did do a digital drawing so that it would be a quicker way of sketching it, but also playing with like values and tones and seeing how to actually draw water because water is a very difficult thing to to recreate especially with the reflection so I wanted to play with that before I even dealt with painting because painting is a longer process and on this slide a good thing that um, I did was that I showed clearly that it was a digital drawing because it did end up kind of similar to the image if you look at it first so I broke it down into the stages of my digital drawing to show to the examiner that it is a digital drawing and what tools I used on uh, Procreate to actually create uh, that digital drawing. One mistake that I did do on this slide was that I didn't label artist inspiration, but to compensate for that, I did leave the artist's name very big. So I think it's quite clear that that is the artist, but it's better to have labeled artist inspiration or find a way to show clearly in writing that you did uh, use this artist to help with your work. This next slide was more artist inspiration because I wasn't satisfied with just that digital drawing. I wanted more help on how to portray water and reflections and I wanted to continue this water and light study so that I could be more confident in how I would recreate water to a certain realistic effect because that's what I wanted my portrait to be. I did not want it to be abstract nor stylistic. I wanted it to be very realistic so that it would be more impactful in the end. For this slide, I do think I could have added more experimentation and more of my work because I do show examples of the artist's work to artist's work and I do talk a lot about how I want to use that for my final piece but I only show one experimentation of how I'm experimenting with water and light and how I want to capture the shades but also uh, control the value and contrast to make it look realistic but I, I do think I could have added more experimentation in this slide. This next slide is where I, where I feel prepared enough to get into my final piece and that's where we get into the stage of developing the final piece. So the sequence goes uh, initial ideas, artist inspiration, and then finally developing the final piece so that you can show what your final product is. For this slide, I just do one experimentation that is a kind of different image because I didn't want to keep repeating the same image of how uh, water is coming in contact with skin and how that appears because there's the reflection of my skin but then also of the surroundings inside of the water. So I wanted to play with that but also in a discreet way because there is uh, a, a bit of contact with the water in the final image that I will use. And then finally you see that I did take, retake uh, my pictures because I wanted more water in the scene. Before it was quite a, a still water background and only coming in contact with my face, but I wanted to add more movement and show more droplets to show like the impact of water coming down on the person. And so I added um, more droplets to create that effect in the picture so that I could then recreate it in painting form. Now you may notice I wrote developing my final piece one. That is because I continue this project with another final piece. I kind of do an extension project and, and so I made it clear to the examiner this was the first final piece but with the same initial idea that will link to another final piece. Now, the second final piece, although kind of an extension of the first one, uh, I started right off on like developing it because I already had the initial idea with the, the theme behind it, but I needed to explain how I was gonna develop it in a different way because I had so many ideas for this project that I decided to do another final piece from it. I do not recommend doing many final pieces off of the same theme. Only if you do, uh, let's say, a painting, like multiple paintings on one final piece, then that would be considered as one. But if you were to do, let's say, three final pieces off of one theme, I think that would already be too much because it would seem like you're just milking the same idea 
for multiple uh, final pieces and that might not come off that well for the IB. So for this uh, slide you can see that I have two artists of inspiration while also explaining that I will um, be creating a new final piece off of the a similar idea, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar enough to kind of conjoin the projects and also explaining how I want to develop it in terms of the the structure because I already knew that I wanted to make it kind of a sculpture painting and not exactly a, a normal 2D painting. Now here on the next slide you see one experimentation of mine on acetate sheets and then how I explain the development. I always have to talk about how I, whether I liked it, kind of evaluating your experimentations before you go to the final piece because then you'll show the examiner that you have a thought process that you're not just doing random experimentations that you see you're testing it out on a similar material and then seeing whether it will work out as a final piece. You should also be evaluating your final piece, whether you liked it, whether you think it was effective in conveying the initial idea, but I think that you should really discuss this with your art teacher and like what the best way is for your project because it's very subjective on how to um, to show that you are conveying it properly um, just by looking at what I said because mine is very personal to my piece but you can still look and read through it and see whether you think that's a good idea to to follow for your projects. Now for this next piece I want to talk about racism and racial inequity in the United States and my initial idea was actually redlining but I, I kind of didn't follow exactly um, a redlining path until my exhibition which I will insert a picture of how I kind of um, brought back the idea in the end which kind of was my initial idea but I ended up letting go and brought it back because it was something that I really wanted to discuss but kind of lost midway. So you can see this follows the same structure. I explained my initial idea. I did not label it this time but I explained my initial idea I then go to my artist inspiration and explain what I want, what I want to do, what's my idea, and how I want to portray it. This slide as well, I have more artist inspiration and I want, and I'm explaining how that has to do and my experimentations, how they link to my artist inspiration and how they um, help me project what I want at the end. Okay, so in this final slide of this piece, I decided to tackle the different motifs in, that I wanted to include. So I explained like the different meanings of the flowers and I also show how my experimentation, what I did wrong. I didn't like the colors and I then decided to change it to only white paint that I smear on top. So I, I kind of do an evaluation but also explaining um, the details of my paintings which is very important for the IB because it shows that you are doing everything intentionally and you're doing everything to enhance your project and not just because it's pretty or if it is just aesthetically pleasing explain why and try and find a connection with your theme because that is always going to get you extra marks now for this fourth project i decided to mix my initial idea from a movie and from my artist of inspiration so i kind of used my movie as an, an inspirational artist because film is considered art but I also kind of mixed it with a different artwork and that's where I got my initial idea from. You will notice that nothing in this slide is my work and I think that wasn't particularly strong because it's always good to have your own work in, in every slide but for this one I really wanted to focus on explaining my idea so that later on the uh, examiner would already know what was going on and then understand my process. So since I started with um, my inspiration being a film, I wanted to do photography at first, but I didn't like how it was going. I liked the image, but it wasn't enough for a final piece. So I do show my development of this side of the project, but I end up not using any of it. But it's good to show the examiner that you were making attempts and that you can fail. Like you can not get your end piece or your final idea at first and that's okay. But you have to evaluate off of your experimentations, off of what you don't like anymore because that will show the examiner that you have critical thinking during this uh, decision process that you're 
actually thinking about how you want to portray your piece and the ideas behind it and you might not get it right away now in my final piece slide i don't do much experimentation on this project i think i should have done more but i do explain a lot of what i wanted to do and i kind of just go straight into it so i did try and do photography again where i took another staged picture but then I thought it would be more impactful as a painting because it would be a still life without um, the woman in the picture but it would uh, still represent the same things and kind of take a while to understand that that still life actually has a lot of impact behind it you just have to look closer and see what's written with the utensils and the cleaning products and so I clearly explained that whole process of how I developed that but not through experimentations. Please see that I'm always uh, labeling my slides, so this one's developing my final piece. I always put a little title there just so that when the examiner's looking through, they're uh, accompanying me in my process and they know exactly which stage I am, at which point, and they know that, oh, although I didn't continue with my development in the last slide, I do start a new development now. and they can track my progress okay this is my next piece uh, about anxiety and you can see that i clearly start with an idea an objective and then i progress with an artist and then already experimentations i think this is also a really good slide because it has those kind of like that trifecta of having your idea written out explained and then an artist that will help you um, put an image or a kind of a theme connecting with the, the initial idea and then you have your own take on it, your own experimentation which I think is a really good start and a really good initial slide to any project. I also really like this slide because it shows the development and how I go in many different directions. On the slide I have photography collage, I have magazine collage and I have digital art which is really good but it can also be too much. You don't have to experiment with a bunch of materials, you don't have to go all over the place. I was just uncertain for which one I wanted to use for my final piece and I ended up choosing a painting, although I was really into doing the collages, but I thought that doing a collage of a big size would not be efficient. Now for my final piece slide, I don't really like this slide. I think I could have added more aspects to it, but since I had already filled the previous slide with a lot of different experimentations and a lot is going on, I really wanted to get down as to why my final piece is like that, why I wanted it to be like that, and whether I liked it or not, like an evaluation, and whether I think it was uh, conveying the message effectively or not. For this next project, I used a picture of my sketchbook at first to show how I was developing my ideas, how I was mapping it out, and I really think that's important for at least a few of your projects. I wish I could have done it more, but I did not like how the other ones looked, so I, I didn't choose to include them. Include them. But this one I, I kind of like, so I wanted to add it to show how I was, uh, my very initial idea and how I was developing it through um, just my thinking process and sketching it out and seeing how I wanted the composition to be maybe, and just like playing around with my very raw initial idea. Now for this project, you can see that I didn't add an artist of inspiration. I don't recommend you do that a lot. I only decided not to add an artist of inspiration for this project because I already had uh, like a final image and I already knew what I was going to do with the piece before I even looked at artists. And since it is such a personal piece to me, I thought of just keeping it with my own inspiration, see how I could do without any other ideas. Um, kind of colluding with my initial one. I do recommend you always try and find an artist of inspiration. It was just for this project, it didn't feel right for me. It didn't feel like I, not that I didn't need one, but that it just didn't fit with the project. I think that's okay, but I, I really recommend you always show that you're looking out and researching with other artists, even if you end up not taking inspiration from them, just to see like how you want to develop your initial idea. Now this next slide, I do think it is a little heavy on the writing. You could add um, more images or experimentations, but since I already had my idea, I was just kind of filling up space with like different options, but I 
really had like a clear image of what I was gonna do. So I do recommend you play around and add more of your experimentations, even if you're not gonna use them. For example, the one on the bottom, I don't use it exactly. It's just uh, a thought I had in my head to add um, into a potential final piece, but I already knew I didn't like it. And I explained that why I don't use it and why I don't like it because I need to make it clear to the IB that I had a selection process, I did try it out, but it was not for me. And I make it clear why and how I think that affects my final piece. Again, for this slide, I do think it's too empty, uh, it's too much writing, but I do like how I give focus to explaining my piece and explaining everything, giving my evaluation, also my opinion, and was I satisfied? It's always good to answer whether you were satisfied or not because then you can tell the examiner what you feel, what you think um, your piece is, whether you liked it or not, because you can always make an artwork that you're not sure about, but I do recommend you give a kind of good evaluation. Do not force it, do not say, oh, my piece is perfect because I am perfect, but do give honest feedback because it's always good to know that they're listening to what you actually think and they can take that into account when they're marking your work. Now, this is my final project. This was one of my most rushed projects because it was the end of the IB. I probably did this project in a week, but I do think it was still a good idea. Um, so don't ever think that just because you do a project faster than the other, like one is more important or you have less slides on it, do know that there are uh, limits to how many slides you can have. I was doing HL, so I think mine was around 25 slides limit, but I uh, that's all in the criteria and that I linked in the description. Okay, so a really good thing that I added in this uh, first slide of this project was an image of an artist and a painting that I saw. I actually went to an exhibition and I saw this painting and I really liked it. I wanted to like use the technique uh, in another project of mine. This is really good because it shows engagement with your work. It shows that you're looking at artists, you're researching in person. That is the most important kind of research you can do. This was the only project that I could uh, unfortunately do that because it was my last project and it was the first exhibition to open in my city. I think that for my year due to the pandemic it will be a little more lenient towards uh, whether you used artists online or whether you actually went to um, a gallery or a museum or anything. But do keep in mind, if you can, please do your research in person because experiencing a painting in person or a sculpture or any kind of artwork is way better than online because it you're actually experiencing the work instead of researching it and, and looking at it through a computer. Now looking at the second slide, you can see that I didn't really uh, do many experimentations for this project maybe because it was like done in a week. You can notice that I do explain my idea a lot. I think if you're not gonna do that many experimentations, if you're not able to, if you don't have time, because I know IB is really harsh, um, you just explain your idea the best you can. I know it's really annoying for the examiner to read more than to visualize it, but I think if you do write very clearly and concisely, uh, you will get your idea across and then they can see right away through your final piece. Um, what you're trying to convey and how good your project is. You can notice that I do do less experimentations and less uh, preparatory work as I go on with my IB. And that's not just a coincidence, it's mainly because I um, am able to develop a final piece faster than I was in the beginning and I'm able to get to a final idea and like already add motifs and already compose my paintings better than I did before. And finally, I have my references. It's not really important for you guys to look at, but please include your references and they do in, they do count as slides. So keep that in mind uh, when you're looking at the limits of the, of the amount of slides that you need to upload. And that's my process portfolio. I do wanna go over a few things overall uh, now, such as how I 
decided to uh, make a different theme, like a layout for every single project. I always tried to make a different background or a different layout for different projects so that you can show that one project is ending and then another one is starting in the next slide. Although you can notice that for different projects, they're kind of similar. So when projects that have a water motif, they have similar backgrounds, although maybe different colors. And I tried to connect these pieces through that. So I'm showing different meanings through the actual composition and layout of the actual slides, which I think really helps the examiner to understand the theme. Besides trying to link projects, um, specific projects together, I think it's good to have an overall uh, color scheme or an overall guide how you want to do. I know I played around a little too much with certain projects because I really wanted to show the difference, such as my racial inequity one compared to my submerged one. They're quite different in how I did the background, but I did try and like keep textures the same uh, while I contrast in color and like also the fonts that I used were really important. But always make sure that everything is legible, that's the most important thing. Um, and also if everything is clear, that your image or your images are good quality and that you always uh, caption everything. Another important factor besides labeling the different uh, stages in your process is labeling every single image. Every single image, whether of drawing, experimentation, painting, you always have to label with the dimensions, title if it's necessary, uh, material, a complete uh, and uniform uh, description of every single image so that the examiner knows exactly the dimensions and what material that is so that they don't have to be questioning and they know that you are aware of what everything is and that you're clear about it. Okay everyone, uh, that was my process portfolio. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it helped. Uh, this process might not be for you, but I think it's a very good core structure to follow if you're if you're kind of lost in the process. Please go follow my Instagram, the name's gonna be over here. And uh, thank you for Ivy with Ian for letting me use his platform and have a nice day, bye.